Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How are you going? Did you have a good break? Catching up on sleep, binge eating on food, watching your favorite shows, maybe playing some video games, or catching up with friends through video conferencing. Um, hopefully, you have you had an enjoyable break, and welcome back to term two. Um, so we're gonna start off term two by pausing proofs. We're gonna come back to that, but we I want us to start with matrices. So that it, it's a little bit easier than proves and it helps us so we can get our assignment done as well. Um, okay, so matrices. Uh, if you did 10 prep specialist maths last year as an elective, then 70% um, of the stuff already you should know from that course. Uh, but if you didn't do that elective, that's okay because I'm going to teach it as if you never saw matrices before ever in your life. Um, Okay, so I'm going to start introducing matrices by, let's consider a questionnaire that I want to collect data on. So I'm interested in how many siblings do you have? And I'm going to ask that about for everyone in our class. And I'm going to collect data about siblings or the number of siblings that people have in our class. So my question of interest Oh, is my pen working? There we go. My question of interest is how many siblings do you have? And in particular, I'm going to focus on, I'm going to collect data based on gender versus number of siblings. So if you guys were here in front of me, I would then ask you individually, oh, how many siblings do you have? Uh, Ala, or how many siblings do you have, Joel? And then you could give me information. Um, so to represent or to write out this information that I, the data which I collect, I'm going to draw up a table, right? So I'm going to draw up, well, you either a girl or a boy, okay? And then I'm going to say, well, zero sibling, one sibling, two sibling, and three or more siblings. So I can't spell girl. Uh, so either you're a girl or a boy. And you have zero siblings, one sibling, two sibling, three plus. So number of siblings. And then this is gender as my second variable. So I just want to collect a table of data of, well, how, you know, depending whether you're a boy or a girl, how many siblings do each gender have based on the data I collect from our class. Suppose we did the questionnaire and I, for one, do not have any siblings. So I'm a girl. So I, I'm a one girl who has no siblings. And then say I asked the whole class, there ended up being five girls of one sibling. And there were four girls of two siblings. Um, I think Eleanor has two siblings. So Eleanor definitely falls in that category. Um, and then there are three, say, three girls with three or more siblings. And then I ask the boys in our class, well, how many siblings do you have? Turns out two boys don't have any siblings. They're an only child. No boys in our class have one sibling. One boy in our class has two siblings. And let's say four boys in our class have uh, three or more siblings, right? So this black table of information gives us an idea of, well, depending on the gender, whether you're a boy or a girl, how many siblings do each of the genders have, right? So essentially a matrix is like a table of numbers. It's a way of summarizing information for two variables. So if I were to present this table of data numbers as a matrix, I would write it as, rather than drawing lines everywhere, I would use a, a square bracket Inside, I have one girl with no siblings, five girls with one sibling, four girls with two siblings, and three girls with three or more siblings, and then the boys, two, zero, one, four. So the numbers inside my table would be the numbers inside my matrix, and then I would be able to put zero, one, two, three, plus, so that I can label uh, the side entries of my matrix so I know what variable it corresponds to. Let me write sideways. Gender. So essentially, down here, this is a matrix, right? This 
is a matrix, this is a table of values. So hopefully you can see the link between matrices and table of data between two variables. So matrices summarize information more efficiently um, and it allows for us to do more complicated calculations to get more interesting answers as well. Um, you will see, notice that in our matrix, there are no lines in between as if it's a table. You, we put spaces instead, like a, a blank space, a gap. Um, yeah, so that's essentially an introduction to a matrix. So back to our notes, right? So a matrix is a rectangular array of numbers arranged in rows or columns. So it's like a table with rows and columns. The numbers in the matrix are called the elements of the matrix. So back over here in the gender versus number of siblings, these numbers inside, 1, 5, 4, 3, 2, 0, 1, 4, they individually are called elements in my matrix. Okay. Uh, the arrangement of numbers in matrices is an extension of a number system. And the rules that govern matrix calculations have many similarities to the arithmetic of numbers. So all that was saying is a fancy way of saying that, hey, when we deal with numbers, we know that 2 plus 3 is 5, which is the same as 3 plus 2. So the order of addition does not matter. That holds the same for matrices. Um, that being said, though, the order swapping in multiplying does not work for matrices. And we'll talk about that later on. Um, so the matrix below, so over here, is a three by two matrix. Three because it has three rows, one row, two row, three rows, and two because it has two columns, one column, two column. So rows go across, columns go down. So don't get yourself confused. Rows go across, columns go down. Um, we say that the dimension, dimension, oh, I can't spell, S, or sometimes we call it the size. And some textbooks even call it the order of the matrix is 3 by 2. Again, 3 because it's rows, 2 because it's columns. You always, say, you always uh, talk about the dimension with rows by columns. So this is a 3 rows by 2 columns matrix. Rows by columns rows by columns across how many across by how many down right so in general we would have a matrix like this so each individual element inside are numbers so these are elements um, you'll see that we label the matrix with a capital letter we label the elements with a lowercase letter of the same uh, letter that corresponds to what we labeled the matrix to be right so um, you also see that in a matrix we surrounded by square brackets I personally prefer sp square brackets because it looks prettier um, some textbooks do round brackets and that's totally okay as well so some textbooks prefer round brackets um, it means the same thing. It's just a, a bracket surrounding a matrix. I personally prefer the square brackets, but it's up to you. Um, you'll notice also, so just move that down, square brackets, uh, note, round brackets, that are also... Okay, um, you'll notice that uh, here we have M rows. And how do I know that there's M rows? So remember, the first number is a row. So we have row 1, row 2, row 3, all the way to row M. So we have M rows. And in this generic matrix, we have N columns. Why? Remember, columns go down, right? It's row by column. So your second number in your um, element entry is your column. So one column, two column, three four, column, four columns, all the way up to n columns, right? So remember, row by column, row by column. Um, and you'll also notice that 
there are gaps between the elements between elements not lines so like we would not rule it out in a table form like you would not write a matrix like this and then rule lines in between that's bad don't do that leave gaps in between the elements so we know that the elements the, the distinction between rows and columns um right so we enclose the matrix in square brackets so or round brackets is okay and we use capital letters to denote the whole matrix itself the elements are lowercase letters with i and j i your first number is always the row position and j is always the column position so for example this three two means it's the third row second column entry um okay here's some other information when the number of rows and columns in a matrix are equal it is called a square matrix so it's a two by two matrix or a three by three or a four by four right and it makes sense why it's called a square right because if you think about uh one 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 i'm just making up a two by two so this is a two by two it looks like a square if i'm just thinking of a three by three i'm just gonna fill every entry with ones because it just makes life easier so that's a three rows by three columns matrix it looks like a square so that's why it's called a square matrix. Um, if a matrix only has one column, then, surprise, surprise, it is called a column or matrix or a vector matrix. So columns go down. So remember, like that, downwards. So this example would be a four by one because it's four rows across and one column down. If a matrix has only one row, it is called a drum roll. Oh, one row. It's called a, a row matrix. So, for example, if I just put things in elements of ones, this would be a one by five matrix because it's one row and five columns going down. Again, you'll see that I put gaps in between the numbers for each column. Um, not do not rule lines between your elements. That's not good. Um. Okay, so here's a little mini example just to consolidate what we've talked about just then. Um, we have three matrices, B, C, and D. Again, notice they are labeled by the capital letters, right? We label the matrix with capital letters. The elements inside, we call them by their lowercase letters. We need to write the order, so the row by column, the type. So is it a square matrix, is it a column matrix, or is it a row matrix? Um, and we need to label the sec A21, meaning that's the second row first column entry, and A13 means the first row third column entry. Remember, rows then columns, rows then columns. Okay, so let's do B first. So what is the order? So what is the dimension of this? Well, how many rows does it have? One, two, three. So it's a uh, three rows by one, two, three, three columns matrix. What kind of matrix is it? Well, it's a three by three. So the number of rows and number of columns are the same. So it's called a square matrix. Um, what is the element A21? So um, because we call this matrix capital B, I'm just going to refer its element back to its lowercase. So B21. 2 is the second row, so second row, 1 is the column, so second row, column 1, so that's minus 4. So B21 equals minus 4. And we want B13, so 1, three, 1 is row 1, 3 is column 3, so that's negative 3. So B13 is negative 3. Let's do C, order, row by column. There are three rows and there is one column. So it's a three by one. What type of matrix is it? It's a pure column, only one column. So it's called a column matrix. 
or you can call it column vector. <coughs> we want element 2, 1. So we want row 2, row 2, column 1. So that's just negative 2. And we want element 1, 3. So we want to have... Uh, row 1, column 3, but there is no column 3. So in this case, there's just non-applicable because there is no column 3. So there is no such entry as 1, 3 because there's no entry there. Um, D, let's finish that off. So the order, how many rows by columns? It's one row by two columns. So it's a one by two matrix. Uh, type, well, it's only one row across, so it's called a row matrix. Um, element two, one. So row two, column one. There is no row two, so it's not applicable. Uh, element row one, column three. Well, again, we can't, there's no answer because there is no column three. So we just write NA.